Yo, what up, a-holes? Thank you for tuning into the Holistic A-Hole Podcast. My name is Eric Levi, and I'm the Holistic A-Hole, the mommy blogger with balls, the inconvenient truth of health. How's it going, everybody? Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're uh, pumped and jazzed for the weekend, the freaking weekend. It's here upon us again, like it is every five to seven days. I uh, hope you're jazzed about the weekend. Look, I just want to... Uh, Give you a little uh, holistic wisdom as you head out for your weekend of fun, of glory, of well-deserved rest and blowing off steam, whatever you do. This was a week where I talked a lot about the flu shot, talked about some real controversial stuff, some stuff that makes people uncomfortable, gotten some feedback, some good, some people weren't crazy about it. Um, and it's not that I genuinely care. I mean, I do care if people don't like the content, but it's more that I feel like I'm not giving you the last bit that I should give, which is what to do instead of getting the flu shot. <clears throat> because as beneficial as your health can be without the flu shot, by the way, this is neither medical advice nor me telling you that you should nor should not get the flu shot. Consult your doctor when it comes to any of this. But it's not that I don't think that, you know, you shouldn't get the flu shot. I think I think you shouldn't get the flu shot. That's just my opinion. But I also think that you should be proactive in your health. It should be a springboard to being more proactive, you know, in your health, right? Like, fact is, you want your immune system to work. Your immune system is designed to work, especially against the flu. Come on, man. You live in 2018. You can beat the flu. You 100% can beat the flu. If you can't beat the flu, you have a lot more problems that you need to be prepping for, that you need to be figuring out with your body. The flu is just, I mean, that's typically just more of a symptom of just general bad health. And look, we all slip, right? I get it. You know, you, you, you live, you live, you can't be perfect. Don't even try to be perfect. It's not worth it, but go live, have fun. But also, man, take care of yourself, you know, get your sleep, uh, eat, eat, eat the right foods. Yeah. You might eat some, some garbage here and there. It's okay. Don't stress. Stress will get you before the chicken wings will, but the chicken wings will do some damage. That is for sure. But just, you know, the big things that you got to do is you got to, A, take care of your digestion. Your immune system lives on your digestion, okay? We, we're, we're, let's talk about, like, how to actually make your immune system work right, you know? Instead of just falling prey to every little germ that goes in your body and just takes over, be able to fight that shit. And you can only do that with a healthy immune system. The immune system lives on the gut. So you got to take care of your stomach. You can't let yourself, you know, just fall prey to eating stuff that wrecks your stomach. You know, you have to be aware of what you react to, what foods you're sensitive to. That's a pretty big clue as to what you should and shouldn't be eating. You know, if you, if you got leaky gut, there's a good chance you do. Most people do. I don't even know how you live in 2018 and not have leaky gut. Uh, fix your leaky gut, you know. Uh, there's a million protocols online. If I had one, I would give it to you, but I don't. But I can tell you that you just need to eat, you know, bone broth. You got to eat, uh, you got you to cut out any, uh, tr try your best to cut out grains. You know, and this isn't like a keto thing. This is just, look at the research, man. You know, the wheat, the grains, the barley, the oats, all that stuff, dude. The quinoa, especially the quinoa. If you cut one grain from your diet, make sure it's quinoa. Get that shit is fucking, it's like, it, 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 it's like little like pellets of Agent Orange just assaulting your gut lining. And then consequently, food slips out and that's how you get leaky gut. That was a uh, quick master class crash course on leaky gut if I ever heard one. So you got to take care, you got to take care of leaky gut, cut the grains, eat more uh, good fats, fix your hydrochloric acid. I mean, that's tremendous. That's the number one thing you can do. Make sure you have enough stomach acid in your stomach to just, you know, burn up all the food you eat, make it into the right 
digestive, uh, you know, make it so it's more conducive for your correct digestive mechanisms to to do what they need to do. Uh, you know, once you get that going, eat more fats, cut any refined sugar, cut any processed stuff. Whatever you do, just cut the processed stuff. You know, that, the sugar, and the grains just wreck your gut. So, uh, you know, if you can get your hands on some... Uh, some uh, some hydrochloric acid. I mean, they sell it. You can buy it HCL. High, uh, you know, it's under different names for different companies. But also on that same end, you know, get off of the the pink stuff. Get off the uh, what is that stuff called? Oh, the uh, you know what I'm talking about. The pink stuff, whatever it's called. Uh, it'll come to me. The pink stuff. The the antacid pills. The Prilosec. Uh, I think I don't know. I think that's prescriptions. You got to talk to your doctor about that one. Uh, you know, obviously cut the cokes, cut the soda, cut all that stuff. But I'm talking specifically about the antacids. Get rid of that stuff because you know you want acid. Acid's good. If you got heartburn, that is a, that's a major indicator that your acid's off. You're probably drinking too much coffee. You're probably eating too much refined shit. Most probably a lot of fried food. I would imagine toxic. You know, rancid oils. Uh, yeah, get rid of that stuff. Watch your, your digestion will fix itself fairly quickly. And when that happens, you have to imagine a cascade effect that just goes all the way through your small intestine, through your large intestine, everything will start fixing itself. Then you also got to, you know, get some fiber in there, right? I know you're, the people are carnivore. Some of you guys are doing this keto thing and you're, you, you, you're anti-fiber. Don't be anti-fiber. Be pro-fiber. It feeds your good gut bacteria. You want that stuff, man. You want the food, the, the, the the nutrients in the food to get absorbed into your good gut bacteria and you want that to fight the bad bacteria so it's so it stops fucking up your gut so it gets rid of the IBS and Crohn's and all the autoimmunity controls your immune system your immune system starts working like goddamn you know seal team 6 on some fucking foreign invading virus cell that's the shit you want you know so take care of your gut take care of your hydrochloric acid and chew your food Chew the food. Let it go in your mouth. Let the saliva crash in there and just chew the shit out of the food and take a breath. Let it let it absorb. Let that aroma and that flavor like get inside you, you know? Uh, eat food that was cooked with love. That way you can feel the love every bite you take. That's what you want when you eat. You don't want to eat angry at your looking at your Facebook, mad about God knows what that has nothing to do with your life. Focus on food deeply when you eat it. Uh, and then the other thing is uh, get your adrenal health together. Get some freaking sleep. Get vitamin C. Get all your B vitamins, right? And the best place to get that, grass-fed butter, bone broth, good meats, right? I know grass-fed's expensive, but look, so is, you know, staying home sick from work, right? So is, uh, you know, getting sick and not being able to, to get out of bed for two weeks, you know, and then blaming the flu, uh, you know, be proactive with your health. If you can only eat grass fed twice a week, then do it twice a week, you know, but figure it out. Uh, fish too, you know, you get a lot of good omega three. You also want to get omega six. I mean, now we're talking about general health, but specifically focus on your adrenals. That's going to happen mostly with sleep and drink lots of water. And then most importantly, I mean, they're all pretty important, but Another important thing is take care of your liver. You have to imagine your body can do all this work to, to kill infections, kill viruses, you know, uh, flush out toxins, heavy metals, parasites, you know, the viruses, the, ba the bad bacteria, the, you know, the, the toxic crap that they preserve food with, the sugars, all this stuff. Like your body does all this work that we just talked about, the gut, the adrenals, the kidneys, Everything does its job, and then it gets to the liver. And if the if the if this this mass is so, I guess just overwhelming, right? With all the toxic material, you overwhelm your liver. You, it can't detox, right? It's like if you if you uh, worked in a mailroom, and then all of a sudden, every every five minutes, someone just dumped a whole bunch of letters for you to sort. Just a whole, you know, five five gallon bucket or something of letters for you to sort. Every five minutes that came. You would go crazy. You couldn't get through it. I mean, that's what's going on in your liver when you have all this shit floating around. 
So you got to stop drinking or you got to slow down drinking. Be careful, you know, cigarettes and really most importantly, the pharmaceutical drugs. Those will clog up your liver, uh, especially the NSAIDs, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, the, uh, the, the antidepressants, the, the, the Tylenol, the uh, Amita, what is it? Oh, Amino Cetaphine or something like that. Uh, whatever the main ingredient in Tylenol is, uh, Advil, all that shit, dude. It clogs up your liver and you can't detox all the crap out of you. And so what happens is it just gets jammed in your liver and it gets reabsorbed into your bloodstream. And, you know, you just live with that stuff more. It doesn't get out of your blood. You have toxic heavy metals. This is what is crushing people right now. Um, so, so specifically, like, some things I would do, I know, like, those are just kind of concepts. I mean, those are definitely things you can do. But to be specific, like, some, some foods and, and things like that you could eat that are good, uh, well, one thing I would say do is you got to make sure you move, too. Do some resistance training. Even if it's just like push-ups and pull-ups, you don't have the money to go to a gym, go to a park and just get on the bars and just pull up, push up, you know, do some like crunches, real good crunches, do like some wall sits. I mean, there's a million of these workouts on YouTube, just YouTube, you know, weightless workouts you can do. Just do some resistance training, um, do some uh, real light yoga, just some cross body movements. I mean, this stuff is really good to, to move your organs around, to move your, literally, physically move your immune system around, move your adrenal glands around, get the right, get the right hormones pumping through your, you know, your limbic, your, your endocrine. Uh, and then, you know what actually really helps? Uh, cold showers. Jump in a cold shower. You want to start your day? You want to start your day? This is how you do it. You, you, you wake up, you drink like five cups of whiskey, like really good. Con- no, uh, you drink you drink like two or three cups, maybe even one cup of like fresh filtered water. Get a freaking Berkey filter. They're like 100 bucks, 200 bucks. Get one. It's the cleanest water you're going to find. Filter that water, drink two cups of it, and then uh, and then you can add some salt, you can add some lemon. Uh, that's a good way to, to, to get some good to get some good uh, vitamin C in you. And then you jump in the cold shower. And if you can hold that, the longer you hold it there, the more you, more benefit you're gonna get. But if you can only do it for like a minute or two, I mean that's totally understandable. But it will wake you up. It will essentially start that you know, peristaltic movement in your blood, in your gut. It'll just start getting things going. It'll move the lymph nodes. It'll move the lymph through the nodes. Like it will physically start moving stuff. It's like if, if your, if your body and your limbic system and your blood was like a, like a train set and then the, the cold water hitting your body, it's like pressing the button on the train set to make the train go. That's, that's what the cold water is doing. Uh, on your body. So you start getting that going. This is how you move physically move viruses and and uh and illness through your body. So this is what you want to do. You want to get you want to get that whole system moving. Um and you know what's also good is in lemons, the white part of the lemon, not like the lemon fruit. Uh you want to squeeze that, you want to get that juice, but the, the, the white part under the fruit is supposed to be just packed full of vitamin C and all kinds of good carotenoids and all that stuff. So, yeah, man, go for it. I've just given you a lot of information. I'm aware of that. Uh, but I hope, I hope you absorb some of it because it will help, you know? It will help, right? Like, I don't get sick. I get sick, I don't know, once a year, and it's not like crushing sick. It's like the sniffles, my nose gets clogged, I have a hard time sleeping, and then, of course, you have a hard time sleeping, you can't you can't have your immune system popping, pop, job, and lopping. So, uh, you know, so it, it, uh, the illness doesn't take me down, but it's like it's uncomfortable for a couple of days. But uh, that's how I, b- I bounce back, you know? And f- for me, it happens more in the sense that it's like, if I get sick, I know when I'm getting sick. I know I'm getting sick because I've run my body down. Like I'm working too much. I'm not sleeping enough. I'm eating fried food. It's a trap. But if you pri- prioritize your health, 
You know, you'll be you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. You won't be shocked. You'll just be so not getting sick that you'll just forget that you haven't been getting sick. And you won't realize you haven't been getting sick until you start slacking and then you get sick. It's pretty amazing. And then you'll be like, oh, shit, I haven't gotten sick in a while. And I haven't gotten the flu shot. And then don't be one of these people who gets the flu shot and then gets the flu and then you're like, oh, well, that's part of getting the flu shot. Uh, look at yourself in the mirror when you say that, by the way. Just watch yourself say that in the mirror and then watch your hand start to go up the side of your body as if you were going to smack your mirror self for saying that. And then you realize, oh shit, I'm about to, I'm about to slap my mirror. That's not a good move. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty wild how people rationalize the flu shot. So, um, yeah, there's some tips for you. Have a great weekend. Thanks so much for listening. Make sure you hit up the, the, the holistic a-hole on all them social mediums, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, uh, join the holistic a-holes Facebook group. And, uh, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the podcast, go leave a five-star review on iTunes and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.